Hello and welcome from Akrona Cyber Threat Summit in Abu Dhabi. Today we have with us Peter French. He is the Managing Director of Synapsis. Hello, Mr. Peter. How are you? Good, good afternoon. Well, and you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Peter, can you tell us more about Synapsis and your role in it? So Synapsis is a distributor for Akronis for both cloud and on-premise solutions. I am the Managing Director and I focus on leading our growth into Africa and into uh, South Africa, which is our primary focus. Can you tell us more about the nature between Synapsis and Acronis? So as a distributor, we are a, a partner of Acronis and mm -hmm. we also nurture Acronis partners in the channel. Partnership being key, where we work together to go in, identify potential growth opportunities um, and, and service the market where we are a multiplier effectively for the vendor. And then we in turn find other resellers to further increase that multiplier effect to reach the end customer. Uh, when you chose Acronis, uh, what was the criteria? Why did you choose Acronis from any other competitor? Well, Acronis, we recognized it very early on in 2003 when they were founded. They were making some really cool technology, um, primarily in the disk imaging space. And that evolved, but it was the, the tech tool to have, a lifesaver for time um, back then, and that evolved into a full-fledged backup solution, and in turn this has evolved now into a cloud backup solution, which gives all those uh, major benefits we've seen in the on-premise space, but with a more accessible price point, more available in the cloud, with the whole cloud shift. It's truly just a, a, a leading product space, and we are really seeing the benefits of it and the growth in our market. What kind of addition or uh, efficiency did Acronis bring to your uh, organization uh, since you started uh, partner, partnering up uh, with Acronis? Well, very interestingly, uh, we only sell Acronis. We are 100% committed to selling Acronis. Ah. So they bring everything to us. We rely heavily and we trust them. Now, of course, being a single vendor distributor may be considered risky, but as I've already stressed, we see Acronis as a visionary, and with our close partnership with them, we know we can rely on their leadership, their R&D, their vision to drive and to lead the market into the cyber, or in the cybersecurity space. Uh, okay, so for any organization or company, uh, what is the role of the IT department and the management in the IT department to bring a partner like Acronis and to solve the issues that uh, rise with the, all the data that, that's being collected and all the backups need, needed? So what, what are the roles of the, those managers? Well, I think that, I mean, the IT manager, it must be a tough job because there is a lot that they have to take care of. It's no longer just about keeping the servers up or uh, updating the systems. It's, it goes beyond that. And I think any company who is truly security conscious in this modern threat landscape, they, they have to focus on the systems themselves. They have to leverage uh, all of the necessary tools, focusing on the multi-vectors of attacks and potential threats to their network which also includes the people. And I think the people element is a critical aspect of your security strategy. So correct training, education of the people, and then finally partnering with a company that provides you with a tool set to focus on these various areas. So relying on technology is key, uh, but relying on education of your people is, is essential too. Automate as much as you can, and then educate beyond there. So speaking about uh, people, uh, it's not all, not everyone, even in big organizations, are tech savvy. Yeah. Let's say. So, what kind of awareness can we bring to not technical uh, people in the company? Because you know, threat is everywhere, not just in the IT department. Yeah. It's everywhere. It can be an email. It can be even a, a message. So how can we raise awareness to protect uh, not only the personal data and the organization, but the whole, the whole uh, system itself? It's a multi-billion dollar question. Yeah. But ultimately, 
it needs to start at grassroots level. It needs to be introduced from a from schooling and upbringing. When you cross the street, you talk to look left and right before you go. You also need to be looking left and right before you click on that link in an email. You need to take extra steps, and it's basic steps. You don't need to be a cybersecurity expert to know not to just open a random email from a stranger and double click on that purchase order PDF that you've received. The threat landscape, as we've said, and as we see, is rapidly evolving. People, they're preying on people to get into the system. That's the weakest link. So what we can do is, as I say, education, using technology um, as well. There's, I mean, Acronis is offering cybersecurity services now, which we look forward to introducing into our market, where there's uh, master classes aimed at your various, you know, I can't say your average employee, but every employee to become more security conscious, become more aware of how they can be attacked and how their data can be at risk. And speaking about that, uh, and from your experience, can you tell us more about your experience before you, you started using the cyber protection solutions from Acronis? Uh, what kind of uh, threats did you eliminate uh, since you started this uh, partnership? Uh, how, how did this change and make it easy for, for you and your well, organization? It's a great question. So prior to this, I worked in the cybersecurity space too, but with a focus on antivirus and anti-malware, mm -hmm. which is an essential part for fighting uh, the threats or for protecting yourself in, against the various threats. But as we see with the Acronis Sapphire, you need multiple uh, vectors of protection. Yeah. So having anti-malware is just one element. Having another copy of your data, having a good backup, a reliable backup. And not just a backup, but being able to recover your backup. Yeah. That's critical. So Acronis is really enabled me as my, in my company to protect my data adequately. But beyond that, it's given me the ability to go and sell peace of mind through to the, the channel and to their customers within our market. So you brought up uh, SAPAS, which, which are the main vectors for cyber protection. Can you imagine uh, a complete cyber protection with one of those SAPAS? We talked a lot uh, earlier about them. Uh, with one of them, I think, can, can it be a, 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 a complete cyber pro protected company without all of the SAPAS elements? No, I don't believe it's possible. I think it's, they are very close-knit and the structural integrity relies on them all being reinforced, all being available. And you pull one of those chain links out and it will collapse. After partnering with Acro Acronis and having uh, those solutions, but I think th there are some uh, challenges for training uh, your um, employees and the people in the organization for such a new platform for yeah. uh, cyber protection, maybe new ideology in the uh, whole organization. How, how can you make this process easier and smoother and transition from the era before this whole cyber protected organization you are in and into the post era after you partnered up with Acronis? Well, it's a, that's, it's a challenge, but ultimately the education element was already mentioned, making the knowledge available, but also making the, the tools simple, easy to use, in a single pane of glass. And this is a very important thing that the Acronis uh, cyber protection platform brings, is it's no longer 10 different tools with 10 different interfaces and 10 different certifications, or almost 10 is uh, yeah, a very small number compared yeah. to how many you really need. But providing that all through a single portal, with a single skill set, makes it a lot more, uh, or a lot simpler to onboard, to, to switch over to this new uh, protection solution. Um, I think it really is a, it removes the barrier more than creates a barrier by providing it all in a single new solution. Uh, with all these measurements, I think a company like uh, Synapses cares a lot about uh, the data and uh, to protect their data. Why we still see so many organizations that are huge and global still don't treat uh, the cyber uh, protection uh, more seriously? W why we see that in a big organization? Oh, 
I think, I mean, you, you said that it's a big organization. A big organization, I mean, they take it seriously. They just, they have a lot of people and a lot of systems and a lot of, uh, uh, well, I think systems and people. That's, the more systems, the bigger the attack area ultimately. So it's not that they don't take it seriously. It's that they're just far more vulnerable to attack. And if a large database is hacked and user information is leaked, it's not because the company doesn't believe that the data they have is sensitive. It's, well, they maybe didn't have the right measures and controls, and uh, it's very easy in hindsight to say, oh, we should have done that. Yeah. Now, of course, we need to be security conscious from, as I've already suggested, from a young age. That type of thinking with our data, with our personal data that we handle, with our customers' data, we we need to instill that into people, into their into their ethos, into their thinking, in the day on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think, yeah. So as a company, a large company, they're just more vulnerable. They of course are irresponsible companies that maybe mishandle data, but as a whole, th those companies are not going to survive in the long run. Yeah. So so everyone is. It can, can be affected by uh, an attack or a breach, let's say. Yeah. Uh, which kind of companies or who is the most vulnerable to cyber attacks in general? Well, I, I believe that the most vulnerable people to cyber attacks is the everyday person. You, me, the uneducated user. And maybe in our personal data is not what's vulnerable. But our way of life relies heavily on critical services, our medical industry, our financial industry, they rely on these interconnected systems of which if they are attacked, if your bank is brought down and you can't transact or uh, we've recently had attack, an attack on one of our municipalities where you could not purchase electricity online mm -hmm. for three days where systems were just crippled. So a user can no longer get hot water at home or electricity at home because a system is attacked that is completely out of their control and they do not even comprehend the complexity of these systems. They did not subscribe to that mm -hmm. system being used. They are literally just a victim of the attack by virtue of being a, a service recipient from this organization. So you and me, the everyday person, we are the victims and we are the most vulnerable. So basically, we can say if we have a proper route of uh, awareness and uh, 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 individuals who know how to protect their own data first, we can reach to a higher level of data protection and uh, the ultimate cyber protection. So it, it all ends to the individuals. Absolutely. We can yeah. say. I believe if we are all cyber literate and security aware with our data, we will carry that forward into the organizations our children will have that love or that ethos and they will grow up working that way and that would make for safer organizations. It still doesn't mean that bad actors won't cause, do damage and won't bring systems to their knees. I mean, it's systems there too. They too are vulnerable. I mean, all that code, there's multiple vulnerabilities that will be identified and exploited. Uh, you, you brought a term that I liked, uh, which is cyber literate. I think uh, maybe if we in schools and universities, if it, it's like a subject, cyber literature, for example, to, to raise the awareness, even for the, anyone who, even if you want to become a doctor, you will work in uh, a hospital, you still have a critical data for health data, you are dealing with data, even if you're a normal pe person, not IT manager, for example. Absolutely. So uh, how can we make this global? Like, uh, is, is there any... Well, it would, be, it would be fantastic to see, and I know there have been initiatives where to introduce it into our local schooling, where you have campaigns about online privacy and on, uh, online responsible internet usage because of the social media. But I, you make a very strong point and a, a key point about a doctor. He needs to be cyber literate. The same way the, a typical day-to-day -day person needs to know how to be a driver or needs to know how to drive on the roads mm. safely. You don't need to be a Formula One racer to know that you need to drive safely. And the car is, okay, it's the vehicle of the previous, the 20th century, 
where everybody just started using cars. And it's, we, it's like a tool now. It's a tool, absolutely. Yeah. But so too is the, the technology, our mobile phones, our laptops, our, our systems. These are the, the tools now. The they are century. not luxury anymore. They yeah. are. And we need to know how to use them safely. So as I, I, I used that simple analogy earlier about looking left and right before you cross the street or before you exit a, a stop street, so too should you know how to look left and right before you send an email, before you open an email, before you post some pictures online or share information. And that type of basic uh, responsible behavior will carry forward. And as, as we evolve and as uh, more people become literate, we build a stronger network of secure thinking or security conscious people that will ensure that the companies, the, the municipalities, the government, the, whoever it might be, have a a safer security structure or security conscious and privacy conscious structure in place. Uh, Mr. Peter, thank you so much for being with us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you too. Thank you so much.